people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's first talk about the partnership between India and Maldives which is a pivotal aspect of stability in the Indian Ocean region. As both nations confront shared challenges, their collaboration becomes increasingly crucial. With India's commitment to providing financial assistance and developmental support, the Maldives is better positioned to tackle these challenges. The recent agreements made between New Delhi and Mali during the Moldavian President's visit to India highlight a shared commitment to growth and resilience through enhanced maritime cooperation and infrastructure development. A report. India and the Maldives share deep-rooted cultural, religious and commercial ties that are steeped in history. This multifaceted relationship has remained close and cordial over the years. India was one of the first countries to recognize the Maldives after its independence in 1965 and to establish diplomatic relations. In a significant recent development, Maldivian President Mohammad Muizu made his first state visit to New Delhi. During this visit, he and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi engaged in comprehensive discussions to review the full spectrum of bilateral ties, emphasizing their importance for regional stability. They highlighted the notable progress both countries have made in deepening their historically close relationship, which benefits the people of both nations. Prime Minister Modi and I held extensive discussions taking stock of our successful development journey together and charting a path for the future collaboration between our two countries. We agreed on a comprehensive vision document charting the course of our bilateral relationship. As Prime Minister Modi met President Moizu, India announced support for the Maldives including 30 billion Indian rupees and 400 million US dollars as part of a bilateral currency swap agreement to help address the country's financial challenges. The leaders agreed to begin negotiations for a free trade agreement and signed five agreements focused on the currency swap, judicial officer training, corruption prevention and law enforcement training. The two sites also introduced the Rupay card in the Maldives and India transferred 700 social housing units while inaugurating a new runway at Hani Madhu International Airport in the island nation. India and the Maldives as natural allies in the Indian Ocean region are united by shared challenges that impact their security and development. They are committed to enhancing maritime and security cooperation for the benefit of their people and the broader region. The visit of the Maldivian president highlighted the mutual commitment of both leaders to strengthen their partnership, emphasizing their dedication to shared growth and effectively addressing regional issues. PM Modi affirmed the importance of India's relationship with the Maldives under its Neighbourhood First policy and Vision Sagar, reiterating India's steadfast support for the Maldives in its developmental efforts and priorities. We are Maldives National Defence Forces ki training and capacity building mein apna sahiyog jari rakhenge. Indian Ocean region mein sthirta और समृद्ध के लिए हम मिलकर काम करेंगे हाइड्रोग्राफी और डिजास्टर रिस्पांस में सहयोग बढ़ाया जाएगा इंडिया हैज कंसिस्टेंटली प्लेड अ वाइटल रोल इन सपोर्टिंग द मॉलदीव्स रिफ्लेक्टिंग द स्ट्रांग हिस्टोरिकल एंड ज्योग्राफिकल टाइज बिटवीन द टू नेशंस 
Over the years, India has extended various forms of assistance, including economic aid, developmental projects, and disaster relief. Notably, India has contributed to the Maldives infrastructure development, funding projects like the construction of roads, hospitals, and housing. Additionally, during times of crisis, such as natural disasters or health emergencies, India has swiftly provided humanitarian aid, including food, medical supplies, and technical support. In order to deal with the structural issues in the finance and the banking sector and others, it is very important that uh, some kind of a uh, financial injection is made into the economy and that's precisely what India has done by providing a bridging facility of 30 billion rupees and then giving some over 380 billion or something like that uh, as uh, assistance or grant or loans uh, for carrying out projects. And so they have agreed on many projects in the process also that will continue. But for all that it is important that your financial health is good and India has tried to provide all the assistance that has been requested uh, by the Maldivian press. India and Maldives work together to tackle shared challenges and enhance cooperation in various sectors. The commitment to mutual growth and development remains steadfast. The collaborative efforts in finance, infrastructure and security illustrate the importance of this partnership not only for the Maldives, but also for the stability of the Indian Ocean region as a whole. With a focus on shared prosperity and resilience, India and the Maldives are poised to navigate the complexities of the future together. Moving on, India's Gujarat state is setting a remarkable example in the renewable energy sector. With initiatives like the Suregar Bijli Yojana, the state is making rooftop solar panels accessible to residents who now enjoy reduced electricity bills and the opportunity to sell surplus energy. Gujarat's hybrid solar and wind projects along with a commitment to sustainability position it as a leader in India's green revolution, contributing 12% to the nation's renewable energy capacity. As the state pioneers this energy shift, it lays the groundwork for a sustainable future for all of India. Take a look. As Gujarat celebrates Vikas Sapta, marking 23 years of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's policy-driven governance, the state has emerged as a leader in India's green energy revolution, contributing significantly to the country's ambitious target of 500 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. From large-scale solar parks to electrification of its transport sector, including the introduction of electric buses across major cities, Gujarat has not only become a renewable energy hub, but has also charted a roadmap for the entire country. Thanks to PM Modi's far-sighted vision that integrated public-private partnerships job creation and sustainable growth. Gujarat Bharat ka wo rajya hai jisne Bharat mein sabse pehle apni solar power policy banai thi. Pehle Gujarat mein policy bani iske baad hum national level par aage bade. Duniya mein jaisa abhi Bupendra bhai ne bataya क्लाइमेट के लिए अलग से मिनिस्ट्री बनाने वालों में भी गुजरात बहुत आगे था। With rooftop solar initiatives making renewable energy accessible to common citizens, thousands of households and businesses in Gujarat are benefiting from solar panels installed on their rooftops. According to a report by World Economic Forum. Gujarat has nearly two-thirds of all residential rooftop solar power in India. Despite having just 5% of India's 1.4 billion population and 6% of its land mass, Gujarat had already introduced its own subsidy system called Surya in 2019. Gujarat's rooftop solar program, which was launched in 2010, 
has been an inspirational model for the nation by 2024 pm surya ghar bijli yojana atul shah a resident of ahmedabad describes rooftop solar as one time investment lifetime profit initiative it not only lowers electricity bills it is also a profitable venture as individuals can sell excess electricity generated from these solar panels हमने जब लगवाए हैं सबसे पहले हमने लगवाए थे सोसाइटी में फिर आसपास वाले पड़ोसी को भी हमने किया कि उसका ये बेनिफिट है ये लगवाओ और इसके हिसाब से समाज सेवा भी हो सकती है आपका बिजली का बिल भी कम आएगा और आपको ये बेनिफिट रहेगा खाली एक बार साफ करके आपको अच्छा बेनिफिट आपको रहेगा तो आस के लोगों ने भी लगवाया उसके पैनल गुजरात combining solar and wind power for maximum efficiency Gujarat contributes to nearly 12% of total renewable energy capacity of India The state has been power surplus since 2009 It is the first state in the country to achieve 100% electrification The Gujarat's renewable energy model also aligns with sustainable development goals reducing carbon emissions and demonstrating india's commitment to addressing climate change agar main baat karu is duniya ka sabse important mudde to wo global warming aur climate change hai aur jo neta humko mile hai prime minister narendra modi ji unka vision jo hai wo bahut clear hai 2070 mein wo india ko carbon neutral karna chahte hain और इस पूरे उनके मिशन के अंदर रिन्यूअल एनर्जी जो है वो बहुत एक इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट ले रहा है इंडस्ट्रीज इन गुजरात टू आर रीपिंग द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ दिस एनर्जी शिफ्ट द स्टेट्स कमिटमेंट टू सस्टेनेबिलिटी हैज मेड इट एन अट्रैक्टिव डेस्टिनेशन फॉर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट्स एज इंडिया लुक्स फॉरवर्ड टूवर्ड्स अचीविंग इट्स एम्बिशियस रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी गोल्स Gujarat remains at the forefront of this transformation. Time now for Asia this week the stories from across the continent. Japan's Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba dissolved the lower house of parliament on October 9th ahead of the general election slated on October 27th the first national vote for the country's new leader. The poll which will come a year early and ahead of the US presidential election in November will decide which party controls the lower house of representatives. Speaking to reporters in Tokyo, Ishiba, a former defense minister highlighted national security and the cost of living as two of his party's key issues ahead of the election later this month. Ishiba became prime minister earlier in October after his predecessor Fumio Kishida decided to end his 3-year premiership due to public outrage over political funding scandals involving the ruler Liberal Democratic Party. Russian and Chinese Navy warships practiced anti-submarine missions in the northwestern Pacific Ocean as part of a joint patrol in the Asia Pacific region Russian Defense Ministry reported releasing footage of the drills The ministry reported that Russian and Chinese Navy ships have begun joint patrols after participating in the Interaction 2024 naval exercises in September A number of training sessions and combat training exercises were planned during the patrol missions the ministry reported including organizing anti-submarine defense and rescue at sea Leaders of ASEAN met with dialogue partner South Korean President Yoon Suk Yeol in a regional meeting held in Vientiane As both sides highlighted the elevation of a comprehensive strategic partnership after 35 years of trade and cultural relations. การพัวพันอาเซียนสกลีเป็นการพัวพันที่สําคัญมีความหมายมีเหนือในและต่างฝ่ายต่างได้รับผลประโยชน์ซึ่งนะครับการเสริมขยายอย่างต่อเนื่องกลวมเอาสามสาวคำของประชาคมอาเซียนคือการเมืองความมั่นคงเศรษฐกิจและวัฒนธรรมสังคมและได้ถือยกระดับเป็นครูหัวมือหอบด้านในปี2004ซึ่งเป็นปีที่สปปลาวเป็นประธานอาเซียนขันธมิตรและถือยกระดับเป็นครูหัวมยุทธศาสตร์ในปี2010
The ongoing struggle of Baloch activists in Pakistan highlights the urgent need for global awareness and action against human rights violations in the region. Those who demand justice face systematic harassment and intimidation, jeopardizing their safety and the fundamental rights of the Baloch people. Recently, Mehrang Baloch, one of Pakistan's most prominent human rights advocates, was barred from traveling to the United States. Despite accepting an invitation to attend the Time 100 Next event in New York City, her journey was thwarted, highlighting the lengths to which authorities will go to suppress voices that challenges the status quo. A report. When Maharang Baloch, one of Pakistan's most prominent advocates for human rights, accepted an invitation to attend a Time 100 Next event in New York City, she anticipated challenges at the Karachi airport. After all, the 31-year-old doctor has garnered widespread recognition for her activism on behalf of the Baloch minority, a highly contentious issue in a country grappling with a protracted separatist insurgency. Despite her commitment to non-violent advocacy, the Pakistani government's response has been anything but supportive. Baloch has faced various forms of harassment for her efforts, including threats and intimidation. Unfortunately, she was ultimately barred from beginning her journey to New York for the time dinner. Maharang was set to receive an award for her tireless campaigning on behalf of the Baloch ethnic group. Today, I had a scheduled flight for New York to attend the Times Magazine's uh, uh, gala for the 100 influential emerging leaders of the world. However, I was unjustly stopped in the Karachi International Airport by the FIA officials. They haven't given me ex any explanation. They have took my passport and my name is not in the ACL. They are not even responding to my queries. Um, uh, I think uh, this is just... Uh, uh, an, an act to uh, silence the genuine Baloch voices because there was not uh, a legitimate purpose to prevent my, uh, uh, my travel just to uh, silence uh, the Baloch voices internationally to conceal the two decades long genocide and the human rights violation back in Balochistan because in Balochistan no media and uh, um, uh, can ever have the uh, um, right and competency to reveal what's happening in Balochistan. What happened to Maharang Baloch starkly illustrates the grim realities of human rights violations in Balochistan, underscoring the significant risks that activists endure in their pursuit of justice. This incident not only spotlights the personal challenges faced by individuals like Maharang, but also serves as a broader commentary on the oppressive environment that stifles advocacy and dissent in the region. Maharang's experience raises crucial questions about the state of freedom of expression in Pakistan. Her barring from travel exemplifies the lengths to which authorities will go to suppress voices that challenge the status quo. It highlights a troubling pattern of intimidation aimed at activists, suggesting that the government is more interested in silencing criticism than addressing the legitimate grievances of marginalized communities. However, activists like Maharang Baloch resolute in their commitment to their cause, embodying a determination that defies the oppressive circumstances they face. The ongoing struggle of Baloch activists highlight the urgent need for global awareness and action regarding human rights violations in the region. The systematic harassment and intimidation they face not only jeopardize their safety, 
but also the fundamental rights of the Baloch people. In Karachi, Pakistan's financial capital, residents are grappling with an unprecedented economic crisis marked by skyrocketing inflation and surging unemployment. Families are finding it increasingly difficult to secure even a single meal each day, highlighting the dire situation. Ineffective government policies have only deepened the crisis, rendering basic necessities unattainable for many. As taxes continue to rise and job opportunities vanish, the once thriving city now faces a grim outlook. In recent years, Pakistan has faced a persistent unemployment crisis that significantly impacts both its economy and society. The intertwined issues of rising unemployment and soaring inflation have been exacerbated by a series of policy missteps which have failed to address the underlying economic challenges. Karachi, Pakistan's largest city and economic hub, is currently grappling with an alarming combination of these two pressing issues. This precarious situation has created a challenging environment for many residents, deeply affecting their livelihoods and overall quality of life. The streets of Karachi resonate with the concerns of its residents as the economic landscape continues to deteriorate. The unemployment rate has surged, leaving thousands of families struggling to make ends meet. Many are confronted with the harsh reality of going without meals applied made even more dire by the spiraling inflation that drives up the prices of basic necessities. बेरोजगारी पाकिस्तान में बहुत है जिसकी वजह से गरीब आवाम तंग है तीन टाइम का तो दूर की बात है एक टाइम का खाना भी नहीं मिल रहा आवाम को उसकी वजह से जो लोग हैं ना डगेटियां और चोरियां करने पे मजबूर हो रहे हैं इन द हार्ट ऑफ कराची अ सिटी वंस वाइब्रेंट विद ऑपर्चुनिटी द शैडोज ऑफ डेस्परेशन आर बिगिनिंग टू लूम लार्जर रेसिडेंट्स बेयर विटनेस टू अ ट्रबलिंग रियलिटी वन मार्क्ड बाय राइजिंग क्राइम रेट्स एंड ड्विंडलिंग होम Families who once had stable incomes are now facing uncertainty, leading to heightened anxiety about the future. आज करके जो हालात चल रहे हैं, ये खासकर पाकिस्तान में, ये कराची में फिलहाल तो देख रहे हैं डकैतियाँ वगैरह, चोरियाँ बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ गई हैं। क्यों बढ़ गई हैं? ये इसलिए बढ़ गई हैं कि पाकिस्तान हुकूमत कोई सहूलियात नहीं दे सकता आवाम को तो आम आवाम कोई काम भी नहीं कर सकता तो ऐसी जगह पे कहीं मिल में जाओ या कहीं भी जाओ जॉब करने के लिए जॉब मिल नहीं रहा तो भाई इसी वजह से बंदे ना लोग कर रहे हैं ये डकैतियाँ या चोरियाँ या किसी को मार भी दिया उन लोगों को कोई फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता हाँ कि उन लोगों को पता ये है कि भाई हालात बहुत ख़राब चल रहे हैं तो इसी हिसाब से महंगाई तो उन लोगों ने किया हुआ है तो कुछ आवाम को रिलीज भी तो मिलना चाहिए ना भाई अमित हाई इन्फ्लेशन The burden of taxation has become unbearable for many, forcing them to navigate the complexities of everyday life. Basic necessities have turned into luxury items and essential services seem increasingly out of reach. Ah, hukumat to kuch kar nahi raha hum ke bare mein to mera kehna to yahi hai ki bhai jab tak ye halaat hain Pakistan ke jo mehngai hai to isi hisab se नहीं चल सकता ये और दिन ब दिन बढ़ती जाएगी और ज़्यादा ही बढ़ता जाएगा क्योंकि नहीं है ना कोई सहूलत यहाँ पे तो कराची के कंडीशन जिस तरह के हर चीज़ पे टैक्स लगा दिया गया है बिजली पे गैस पे गैस तो अभी तो हालांकि नहीं है अभी तो घरों पे भी नहीं आ रहा बाहर तो गैस मिलना भी बंद हो हो गया है क्योंकि कहीं सिलेंडर वगैरह धमाका कुछ भी हो जाता है तो पता बहुत परेशान होता है इसलिए ये जो हालात हैं पाकिस्तान के पाकिस्तान में बहुत देर हो गई है In Pakistani cities like Karachi, the struggle continues, and with each passing day, the dream of a better future grows fainter, leaving the people to confront the harsh realities of their lives, one of unmet needs and fading aspirations. As the economy struggles, the gap between hope and reality grows wider, creating a divide that feels harder. and harder to cross
In Pakistan's biggest city, the weight of disappointment grows heavier with every hardship. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.